Uh, and that's more on that later. But uh, every Wednesday, we also do this. Join the club of I have to say, I did not re- realise there were that many NIMS. Uh, I had a working knowledge of like acronyms and pseudonyms and uh, homonyms and contronyms. And I-, I probably knew about 10 NIMS. But when I went to Wikipedia, there were NIMS that I have never, ever heard of. I've used them. Uh, and when I see their definition, I go, oh, that's what it's called. Uh, and that's a-, a NIM that I'm doing for you today. It's an exonym. Now, an exonym is a place name that isn't used by the people who live in that place, but it's used by others. Uh, It's also a xenonym, but I'm going to go with exonym for today. one 800 I'd love you to ring me up and uh, give me an example of an exonym. Uh, maybe you've even been to that place. Or 0467 is the NIM hotline. Uh, let's talk to a linguist about exonyms. Lynn Stone. Welcome, Lynn. Hi, Jules. Had you heard of exonyms before? Uh, before this afternoon? Not really. I mean, I'd heard of the concept, but the actual name, mm. um, the actual NIM for it, I hadn't heard. But did you know that exonym also has an antonym? What, what do you mean? Well, it's got a word that's opposite, and that's an endonym. So an exonym is an external name, but the endonym is the name that the people within that group call themselves. Okay, so Deutschland is an endonym and Germany is an exonym. Perfect. Okay, that's exactly right. what it is. Um, exonyms are, are kind of fascinating. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll go through a few examples because they can exist, obviously, for a country or a city or a place. But, you know, they're not only interesting linguistically, but they're also kind of politically sensitive often, aren't they, Lynn? Well, they, they, they are. They can, they can sometimes have evolved from historical or political or uh, geographical claims and sometimes also just to help people who've, who've walked into a, a, a group or a place or a country and can't pronounce the actual name. So there's, you know, there's, there's linguistic reasons why it happens as well, but it's not, they usually turn into pejorative terms. For instance, Indians um, in, in the United States, the indigenous peoples of the Americas, uh, are, have been referred to as Indians and they, they, they really stand against that. It's quite a, quite a horrible term. Yeah, it is. And, for uh, them. It's yeah, not for, for people the, from India, obviously. And exonyms are also often for countries, especially being slowly overturned. I mean, Salon uh, was a, a classic one. And I, I think Salon, the word came, uh, this is, of course, the old name for Sri Lanka that was used in English. It, it came from a Portuguese word, I believe, Lynn. Yeah, they were, they were quite a seafaring nation, so they did a lot of that. Um, and words like Salon, even though they've sort of they, they've reverted to the, the, the proper native um, words, still remain in things like Salon tea mm. and so on, or Siamese twins. You know, we don't call Thailand Siam anymore. Yeah, I mean, you, you, have, you have various kind of Siamese adjectives too. And that, so Siam changed its name to Thailand uh, yeah. in 1949. In 1972, Salon became Sri Lanka, so we lost the exonym there. Obviously, in 1989, Burma requested that the uh, new English name of the country be Miramar, which we use today, Lynn. That's right, yes. Yes, and I, I used to get uh, a, a little bit confused, actually, um, flying over uh, the countries that, uh, that had sort of newly um, expressed endonyms <clears throat> and um, looking at the map on the, in the, in the, the aeroplane and going, oh, where's that? Wait, where's Burma gone? <laughs> and so on. I, I didn't actually know that they'd done that until, uh, until I was on a plane. Of course, Australia has its own exonym. Um, if you're in France, they call, I mean, it's not a big difference. They call it Australie. Of mm-hmm. course, and I think in several other European uh, nations as well. And I was looking for an example of an Australian exonym, and probably the best one would be Ayers Rock, would you say, is an exonym yeah, for Uluru? That, that's definitely um, the most modern one, um, and uh, one that's only just very recently changed. Um, but, of course, it's not just about places as well. Exonyms um, can also be ethnonyms. Did you know that? No, well, you're, that, you're really nimming it up now. <laughs> yeah. really An ethnonym. Because of this segment. I'm not even going to name the segment, Jules. But, um, <laughs> but yes, uh, look, an ethnonym is an external name for a group as well. So we, there, there have been lots and lots of names for the Indigenous peoples of, the, of, of Australia mm. as well. Um, and actually, the word, the word Aboriginal wasn't used to 
uh, define Australian people. It was a word that was actually used for, for native people um, of all sorts of countries, including Canada and, and South America. But then it turned to be something that was descriptive of, um, only descriptive of, of, of people who lived in Australia. Uh, but we still haven't really settled on, on what, we're, what we're going to say. And it's the, it's the same with Indians, or not Indians, sorry, the indigenous peoples of the Americas. Nobody's yeah. really agreed so, so, on exactly what they're going to be called because they are, there's quite a lot of um, diversity in those nations. So, so is, is Aboriginal an ethonym? And, and you know, because obviously many... You know, Aboriginal people in Australia would prefer the term Koori or Ghana or, you know, the, the actual nation that they belong to. And Aboriginal yeah. is the ethnonym. Yeah, that's the ethno, ethnonym. So ethno is the, um, is the, is the, mm. the root word to there. Yeah. Uh, so, so other comment. There's lots coming through. Taiwan at one point was Formosa. I think that was a while ago, wasn't it, Lynn? That sounds like a, a Portuguese thing yeah. again or, or perhaps an Italian thing. I like my favourite one is is uh, the the Finnish exonym for London, which is Lon Two. Lon Two. I'd be happy to call it Lon Two. <laughs> also, I was reading that some exonyms like Japan, obviously, you know, mm. it's it's Nippon over there, but Japan came from a mispronunciation. I, I think it came from Marco Polo, who was travelling through China, and when he got back, he had a name for an island, and it got passed around, and Japan was the end result. Yes, um, Japanese whispers, maybe. <laughs> but, yeah, that often happens with, with mispronunciations. Um, and, you know, that's, that, it, it's fairly acceptable. I, I like the, the, the Spanish word for um, the capital of Turkey, uh, which is Angora. And, and it still remains as, as a, a type of rule, but it's Ankara. But that would cause some political tension, wouldn't it, Lynn? Like, I know some countries like Turkey, because originally, uh, you know, well, there was Constantinople rather than Istanbul, <laughs> and that was very tense because of the Greek-Turkish thing. So, uh, you know, and, and I know that the Ivory Coast really campaigned hard to have their name changed officially to Côte d'Ivoire. Mm, you know. Yeah, which is a French name, which you know is interesting as well because that's the the, the, the main language that's uh, the lingua franca um, in that area. And yes, look, people people do, as you know, get very um, picky about language because language is is the outer expression of the inner workings of our minds and of our societies and of our kinships and so on. So people people really do get picky about it, and I understand why. You know, one one thing that is breaking exonyms down. I mean, besides the internet, but if if you're a like me. Lynn, a, a fan of the world game soccer, yeah. um, you know, because you're seeing teams like Napoli play and Torino. Yeah. So to use a word like Turin or Naples to me now doesn't seem right. I know. But, because, you know, Bayern München instead of Bayern Munich, you know, is, yep. you see the teams there. So, so often, you know, because we're exposed to global sport or even just global movies now, exonyms are, are gradually eroding. They certainly can be, it's true. And, of course, language changes by use, so you will push exonyms out um, by encouraging use or, or, or just, you know, being exposed to the actual endonym. Uh, lots of text coming through. Uh, Vicky says, of course, Greece instead of Hellas. And mm. you don't go to the Greek consulate, you go to the Hellenic consulate. It's interesting that Hellenic is the adjective, but Greece is still the name of the country. Yes, it's it, it's it's. It, I, lo, I do love countries that have incredibly different names, um, you know, from from the from the exonyms and also for their language as well. Like take take Holland for instance. They they do refer to themselves as, or they refer to the country as Holland, mm. and sometimes um, you know Nederland. Um, um, but we call it Holland, and they speak Dutch. They don't say they speak Dutch. They say they speak Nederlands. Oh, really? Well, where did mm. where did the Netherlands come from then, Lynn? Well, it's. It, I love. I actually love this. It means low country, and so the French exonym for for Holland, for the Netherlands, is Pays Bas, which means low country. <laughs> really? Yeah. Why don't we, as a you know, because the word Deutschland isn't that hard to say, Lynn. Why, why don't we, as as English speakers, just call Germany Deutschland because it's such a different word. Again, I'd be happy to. And the French, the French do it differently again. They call it Alemannia, yeah. you know, which is, which is um, you know, great. Um, look, I think with Deutschland, the EU saying oi, I think is, is very confusing to read. So there could be a linguistic reason, um, you know. And, and calling, calling um, lands um, using their exonyms also has to do with sometimes with the first tribe that people meet and the first tribe that people talk to. Mm. Um, so that's, that's what can cause that, that difference as well. It's not necessarily a, a political or a colonial thing. Uh, sometimes it's just the first people you bump into. You go, all right, 
they're all German. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking to Lynn Stone, a linguist, and we're talking in Nymphomania about exonyms, which is a place name that isn't used by people who live in that place that is used by others. Uh, lots are coming through. Uh, we were just talking about Germany and Deutschland. Uh, someone's saying Tasmania was Van Diemen's Land. Is that an exonym or is that just a name change? You know, that's a really, really good question because I, I did Tasmanian suddenly say, right, that's it. We've we've called this Tasmania from the start mm. and we're not going to going to accept Van Diemen's land anymore. I'm not sure, actually. Some a historian would be would be good that way. But you know, it's not just countries, it's languages as well. So it's glossonyms as well, which is words for languages or dialects. For instance, I I understand and, and can speak Scots, which mm. is a, a dialect of English that's that's, you know, Scottish in origin. But I don't like it when people call it Scotch. Oh, really? Mm. Uh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. So yeah. Scots is the adjective, not Scotch. That's right. So it should yeah. be saying, like, Scots fillet. Really? Yeah, we really should. Scots now, whiskey. Now, 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 here's an interesting one from Laura, because we're talking exonyms. She said Saigon for Ho Chi Minh City. Now, now, I think that's the country just renaming the city for political reasons, like, you know, St. Petersburg became Leningrad. Mm. Uh, you know, um, you know, during the the Russian Revolution, and now it's changed back, of course. So Saigon and Ho Chi Minh City—that's not an exonym, is it? As such? No, not as far as I know. It's the same with um, with Libya. It's uh, it's referred to as within Libya as the Socialist People's Libyan Arab Jamahiriya. Okay, right. So that's that... definitely a political thing. <laughs> Will has just texted through Lynn to say that you're freaking him out because we've got exonyms, we've got ethnonyms. What did you just say? <laughs> Glossonyms? <laughs> Glossonyms, yeah. And, and place, place names are actually called toponyms. So they can be exonymic or endonymic toponyms. Okay, and we haven't even got on to denonyms yet, which is the names that people call themselves from certain places, like Glaswegians or... <laughs> Or, right. or, you know, uh, you know, I, I did that one. Melburnians as well, or Adelaideans. <laughs> um, yeah, so, <laughs> so many. Uh, Lynn Stone, thank you come, to come on. I think this is the first time ever I've talked about exonyms, but it is a, a really interesting kind of area. And you really notice what an exonym is when you say go to Europe for the first time and drive around and you're seeing Nuremberg and München and Kohl <laughs> and Praha instead of yeah. Prague. And you're suddenly confronted uh, you, you sort of it hits you like a truck that you've you've just been using different names to the people of that country. It's amazing, isn't it? Den Haag. I used to live in Den Haag, but it's, we call that the Hague. Oh yes, the Hague. Den Haag. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that's, it, that's linguistic, definitely. It's hard to say. Uh, Lynn, isn't there a town? There's a town in Germany called Essen, isn't it? Isn't there? Does that yeah. mean to eat in German? I can do. Yes. I just love the name of a town to eat. I mean, it's just perfect for somewhere I'd love to visit. Probably uh, a lot of sausage and beer. <laughs> Lynn Stone, thank you so much for joining me for Nymphomania. My pleasure, Jules. Uh, that's Lynn Stone, a linguist. Uh, there's so many nims yet to do. If you have a suggestion, uh, 0467 I haven't done pseudonyms yet, but there's things like contronyms, uh, which fascinate me as well. So many nims, so little time.